welcome to another edition of the Big Blue Report. My name is Randy Zellia, Ryan Stern. On assignment this week, not with us, but who do I got with me? I got the man himself, LPG, license plate guy, Joe Rubach, good friend of mine uh, for, for quite a few years now. Joe, thanks for giving me some time today. I know uh, it's been, it's that, for you, it's that, I guess, busy, slow part of the year before training camp starts and with school and everything else like that. So, I, again, I appreciate and, uh, and I'm honored to have you with us today. No, nah, no doubt, man. I love to be on here. It's funny, too, because because most people think that, uh, you know, it's it's uh, getting to the downtime for me where where, you know, school is ending. But I work at, at an 853 school and it's 12 months. So I don't have I don't have a summer like uh, like it's like taking off, you know. I'm not I'm not at a regular school where I get where I get off like everybody else. So everybody starts talking summer. I'm like, <laughs> well, listen, summer summer is my uh, is is my favorite time of year because I know the NFL is right around the corner, and that's just you know that's always been for me, uh, and I know for you because you being the I, th- I think the most I don't want to say the most diehard fan, but I want to say the most passionate Giant fan. I think that's you know, the it, best way of saying that, that's a, that. That's a cool word. I think can't, you can't say I, I hate number one fan because we're if you root for the Giants, you're the number one fan. Um, I like passionate. Um, loyal's up there for me because I mean you got to be kind of loyal to go to 21 years of of games straight. Yeah. Yeah, and not and not so, have passion. It's good too, but and not have a and not, with with the way this team has performed uh, a lot of times, it's it's also good that you haven't developed a serious drinking problem too. So you know, I think that's a, a good way of looking. <laughs> at, I think that's a good way of looking at it as well. Um, you know, I, and one of the things yeah, that no I doubt. I think one of the things I love about you, dude, is is not only like you have a great relationship with not only uh, you know with your fellow fan base, and because you know we've discussed in the past that the license plate guy as, as a, like a brand as well but it's also the relationship you have with the players and you know you you do your game your your, your charity softball game which is to me to me is the highlight of my year too and i you know I've, I've been a little down that we haven't been able to do it for a while but man you established something to me which is like, like i said it was like the most for me the most fun and the most important event of the year because you created something to close to all access for a fan event that that I've ever yeah, seen. I, I really appreciate you leading with that because you know it's probably it's probably the best thing I ever did in my life as far as uh giving back to the fans. You know, when you have a platform that I have and that's you know took me years to get this LPG thing and you know I know as a fan what other fans would want and that is access to players autographs pictures have a giants event that's fun uh, take care of the media who you know has taken care of me and written plenty of of articles some not good by the way and uh you know like like and you know give, give stuff back to to the fans like that while making it affordable and giving to charity what more do you want no, there's not. There's nothing more you can want. And what, one of the things that I have said multiple times, like I just said before, it's my favorite time of year. We always, we always have a good time too. And I think that to me is, yeah. you know, we just not only not only us as media members, but the fans and and of course the players watching the players' faces, being there. You know what I mean? Like I, to me, I remember watching uh, Damian Harrison. And on all those guys playing dodgeball with each other, like where else are you going to start seeing guys like you know Dominic Rogers, Camardi, and and those guys all just hang out with Ahmad Bradshaw? I've seen all the different generations of Giants, and um, I still had the video, and I sent it to I, I sent it to someone the other day of Eli getting up to bat at the first year you had the game. You know, I just yeah. I, I have to ask, out of all these things that you that have happened at your games, which has been your top two or three favorite moments? At the at the games, um, probably the top three. Man, what a good question! Look, I had no idea if Eli was going to show or not. I had no idea that Coughlin was surprising me to come to the game. 
I knew Saquon Barkley was in, but to get 22 of the 30 running backs I invited to the game was probably my favorite piece because, you know, I, I, I spoke to, I spoke to people on the phone. I, I can't believe like I'm talking to, you know, Tucker Fredrickson. I'm talking to, you know, Rodney Hampton to Tiki Barber to Joe, any, anybody. And yet these guys are at my event and, you know, I wanted to make it really special that year for Barkley because he was brand new. And I remember going up to him and, you know, he remembered me from the draft. And I said, you know, I pointed to all these running backs. I'm like, they're here for you, bro. Like they're here for you. And I think he was really taken back by that. Like, wow, like this is giants royalty. So, um, you know, it was real important for me to put on an event like that and especially to give back to the fans. You know, I could have made that ticket a hundred dollars and I would have sold out. But instead I made it twenty instead I made it twenty bucks and you could take a family of four or five to the event and that, that's important to me. And, and I also love how the players go into the stands and they make sure everybody gets an autograph and that they, they get something that's just it's it's an experience, and the problem with the sports and entertainment in general right now is everyone is so protected of image and so and so on and so forth. Like you look at a, a guy, I'll use Victor Cruz for example. Victor Cruz will always go down as a legend in this organization and helping that team win that last Super Bowl against the Patriots. And he had not been around the Giants since he had uh, gotten uh, let go, but him being at that event, you saw him. He, he even said after afterwards, he's like, I don't understand why I've stayed away this long. And he says he was very yeah, grateful. To, yeah, grateful, grateful to you for bringing him back into that to that fold, even for one night. So guys like that, and then also seeing guys who have sort of been forgotten that we have forgotten for a long time. Seeing those guys, you know, not that they're not great giants, but they're just out of sight, out of mind. You know, it's 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 funny because uh, I hear a lot of <clears throat> I got a lot of since you said sports industry. You know, a lot of autograph people and people that put on a lot of shows and it's that and they're telling me, you know, you're missing the boat. You're leaving so much money on the table. Why don't you have an autograph uh, uh, meet and greet while you're there? And and they're right. I could have made the charity a lot of a lot more money. But I I you know, I don't think running the players through that type of thing, you know, that's going to take a couple of hours of them signing. I don't know if they, you know, one, I don't know if they want to do that. I'm sure they do if you pay them. But I don't I don't think they want to do that while they're there with their friends and teammates and ex-teammates and fans. And I don't know. I, I don't look at it that way. I went to a I went to a, a a softball game many years ago, maybe seven, eight, nine years ago. And in the middle of the game, like in the middle of like the, the home run derby to the game, they took like 15 players. And they were gone for like two hours. And it's like, wait, what's going on here? Like, it sucks. What's going on? I'm going to be wait because I don't want to spend 200 bucks on getting an autograph. I got to wait here for two hours before they come back on the field. Now, I'm not, I'm not down with that. I'm not. No, and I think, too, there's also a difference between, you know, <laughs> from a financial game, but also the overshadowing of, hey, this is still a charity event. It's, you know. It's 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 blur. You can't blur that line between financial and um, charity. And I think you you do such a great job with that. And one of the things too that I, I remember uh, when Davis Webb was there, and I think he did it with Daniel on the on the last time you had the game, is you do the fun things where you you, you tell a fan that if they can get past the yeah. offensive line. I absolutely yeah. think that's hysterical. And I, I to me, I think you know, I tell you the one thing that. You know, this is my opinion, and I'll help you with it because I know how to do it. The next step is streaming, streaming the event live. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 a lot of people ask for that. And yes, I wouldn't mind your help when it comes to that. And, uh, and yeah, that, that sack of the quarterback, if, you know, if you could get to the quarterback, you get a full expense paid trip to the Pro Bowl. And it's funny because I tell the lineman, I said, unless your ass wants to pay for this, you better not let him through. <laughs> so, uh, so they they don't sack the quarterback. You know what? You know my one of my favorite parts is when I bring that female softball pitcher. Yeah, I love that too. Actually, and no one, yeah, no one could, no one could touch those girls that come. No one. 
<laughs> yeah, I um who was it who won the home run derby the first year? I forgot. Oh, I'm trying to uh the first the first year uh was it Smith the fullback? No. Uh he won one. Who won the first year? I'm trying um, to think. I know that Nick Nick Gates won it the last time we had it. Um was it Davis Webb? No, Dave, it wasn't Davis. Davis was like second place. But I remember whoever won at the first one kept on tipping the softball, like like the softball pitcher. Mm, I, you know what? I think it, I might I might have been Smith. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I like I said, you put on a, a first class event, and um, hopefully now that we're seeing the end of this pandemic, that hope maybe next year we'll be uh, we'll back to normal. I know the original plan for the last year's game was the Jets and the Giants. How, what would that would have looked like? Oh, man. So, you know, every year is, you know, offense versus defense, current Giants versus old Giants, or a mixture. And this year I wanted to get the, the Jets involved, and I got a commitment from some guys, and it was going to be, you know, whoever on the Giants and whoever versus the Jets. Same thing, dodgeball, home run derby, and a softball game. And I, I think it would have been pretty cool. Um I, you know, I got some yays and nays because obviously if I do that, I'm not going to have over a hundred giants there because you can't really play that game. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm up in the air to, to what I'm going to do in 2022 because I'm going to be back up and running. And I also don't know who's taking over. Uh, I have, I've had talks with Barkley. I've had talks with Galladay. I've had talks, you know, my man, Donnie Holmes is in no matter what, but, you know, I, I would like another headliner along with him. So, you know, I got a couple months to figure it out because don't forget, it takes six to eight months to, to get that together. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And like, there's so much detail that people don't even realize about trying to put an event like this together. It's one thing just to have the talent there, but it's a getting the talent there, getting everything set up at the field, getting the sponsorships, getting everything together. To help make that, and like I said, you do a tremendous job. Um, I, I, I've got to transition on, onto the field uh, about what the team is looking like this year. Uh, I feel better. I know. Uh, I know. There's. I, I'm finishing up a, a piece for the website for the five biggest questions uh, for the Giants. I want to ask you those five biggest questions that I that I feel that the Giants have this season, and see what your thoughts on the one is going to be. Uh, the health of Saquon. I, I, I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. Number one is going to be whether we're going to have a home playoff game or or away. I don't know. <laughs> Good question. Uh, I I think that I really do think that uh, it's not as well. I, like, well. like I said, the first question for me is going to be Saquon Barkley. Unlike the last couple of years, though, I don't think the offense is going to rest on his shoulders. Um. Obviously not with the weapons that they added. Right. Um. I think that the Giants are going to be dangerous. I know, I know I say that every year. I know I pick them to win the division every year. I know I pick them to go undefeated every year. I know I pick them to win a Super Bowl every year. But but in in reality, the Giants are going to be dangerous. The number one through five question you should have is Daniel Jones gonna take the leap. That's, That's my it. number two. That's, That's actually number two. No, it, it shouldn't be number two. It's one through five. There's no other thing to be talked about, Randy. You can't – Saquon Barkley is going to come back. He's going to be devastating. You're talking about an unbelievable weapon out of the backfield. You're talking about running for 1,700 yards, if not 2,000. I think Galladay is going to open up the offense. I think Kadarius Tony, you're going to give him a little screen pass, and the son of a gun is going to be megat all over the field. You're going you're gonna to see – you're gonna, you know, who's gonna benefit? You know, who's gonna benefit? Shep is gonna benefit mm -hmm. because I think Shep is the most underrated giant we have. So, all of these things you put into place, and the addition of DeCastro or whatever his name is, just kidding, although I would love it. You, you put all, all this, these pieces into play, and if the line does what they're supposed to do, having another year under the belt. And Daniel Jones takes that third year leap like a like a uh a Josh Allen, uh like a Baker, 
I think the I, I really do put all your money on the over seven. Vegas has the Giants, you know, at under seven wins, which I think is ridiculous. And I think the Giants win a division. I don't care about Washington's defense. I don't care that Dak is back. I don't care about any of that stuff. The Eagles are going to suck, okay, and the Giants are going to take this division. One of the things I, I said, too, and I even brought it up in one of the media sessions, and Joe has even – Joe couldn't deny it, but he also couldn't agree to it because he felt that every team last year with the pandemic had no spring. But I think when you bring in a new coach and with a new system, with a lot of new players – it's hard to get acclimated in that three-week training camp period with no no preseason games. I th always and I always think the first four weeks of the season is always a you're going to weed out the teams that are really just hot in the first part of the year to the really good teams. I honestly feel that if now that this this team has a spring, they're going to be going to camp tinkering and polishing instead of teaching because they have a lot of their guys back from last year. I, I really do think there's a major difference from having a spring. And like I said, Joe was not agreeing with it, but he wasn't denying it either. And I wanted to get your take on that. Look, Joe Judge did what he was supposed to do last year coming in. And, and what I mean by that is, is what you just kind of alluded to, and that is coming in polished. They know how it's going to run. They know what to expect. Um, I, I think every player's got to make an adjustment, a leap forward as to what Joe said in regards to their, their spring and their step. But um, I don't know. I, I think this year is there are some expectations that haven't been around this team in a long time. Expectations is a very, very scary word with this franchise. Remember the last time was 2017, those expectations were there, and it ended up being 3-13. But that's also a lot different of a situation uh, than we have right now. I, I think what I like about Joe Judge is the fact that he, I feel that he is a player's coach, and I don't think he's going to ask his guys to do anything that he wouldn't do. If he's going to commit to being there at 5 a.m. in the morning, he wants the players to be there at 5 a.m. in the morning. He'll do it, too. He'll do everything that they want to do. And I also think, like you just said, it's a different vibe. And it does come down to Daniel. I think it does. You know, and Daniel has not shied away saying that he knows that it's – this is the – it can it be three and out for Daniel. That's that's one of the – how I phrase the question. Is it going to be three and out? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question because what the Giants did with free agency in the draft, is they set themselves up lovely. They have a, a 21 first round pick. They have a 21 first round pick. Okay. And then you add that with a 2022 first round if you wanted to. And you you bunch three of them together, you know, and go anywhere you want in the draft and get anybody you want. However, I really hope you and I aren't discussing this because it's a moot point when you have Daniel Jones making the leap that he made. Right. And, and I think that's another reason why also uh, Dave made the trade on draft night to get some more draft capital. He's protecting himself just in case things with Daniel don't work and they can jump, jump right up a little further if need to be. Yeah. Come on, man. No brainer. It's a, it's a no, are you kidding me? There's not one. If you're complaining about that, then you're really an idiot then you really don't know football. Mm -hmm. If right. you are complaining that the Giants set themselves up and you really wanted Devontae Smith, which I think is going to be in the blue tent more than he is on the freaking field, I think you're an absolute idiot and you don't know the game. I right. will take Kadarius Tony and I will take the picks and I will run home with them. Yeah, I think it was a, probably the best. I think the Giants won the first round of the draft. There was no complaining. Uh there's no, there was no complaining, absolutely none. And again, it comes down now to Daniel, and I think that's really, really, really what it comes down to. Now, I want to transition to something which I saw, and I absolutely loved it, and I wanted to get an update from you on it. Um, I'm very big with making with my making my kids happy, and then you know, doing stuff when they when a, someone who's got some public appeal says hello to them or sends a video over for them. I did notice that you were on Cameo. And yes. I, and I have to ask what that experience was like for you. All right. So <laughs> it's funny. You're the first person that actually brought this up to me. So look, 
I've been on Cameo for, I don't know, two, a year, year and a half now. Um, I, I've made over 130 cameos, which is mind boggling to me because I don't know 130 people that want to see my ugly face. So that's, <laughs> it's mind boggling. To me. But, but I happen to be having a lot of fun doing it. Now, look, I've been making videos for people or sending messages for years. You know, oh, LPG, my dad's birthday. Wish him happy birthday. Hey, dad, happy birthday. You know, whatever. But, you know, to make a little money is always a good thing, especially when I have to pay for all my away games. But I've really been getting into them, man. I've been like, I've been like doing like some funny stuff in my video. Like I'm some kind of an actor or something. I love it. I really do love it. Would you consider doing some of your cameos when they let you back in the stadium this year and doing them from the field? You know what? I probably would, but I'd probably wind up getting in trouble. Okay. You know, I, just... I got to tell you, Randy. I, I got to tell you, bro. Who is that? Joe Judge at the door? What do you got? Yeah, I, Sa I, I... Saquon Barkley's joining us? Yeah, I, th I think it's uh, I think it's Barkley. <laughs> All right, so he, here's – Here's the deal, man. I got to be honest. Uh, let's just say the Giants in the NFL don't love me as much as I love them. <laughs> everything I do, everything I do is under a microscope. Um, I think this is totally just in my head. But I think they, they think, I think, I work for the organization. I don't work for the organization. I never claimed that I've ever worked for the organization. But when I put out raffles and and contests and this and that, I'm constantly getting cease and desist letters from the Giants, cease and desist letters from the NFL. I mean, I'm like, I'll give, I give 99.5% of everything I do to the Giants. I give 100% to charity. Why are you on my case? Why do you constantly <laughs> want to set me down? It's so annoying, bro. It really is. And I try so hard to do the right thing, and sometimes I just I just step on myself all the time. Oh, it's it's frustrating that you have to go, that, go through that. I think I could speak for the fan base when we said we, we appreciate everything that you do. Um, so now, my I guess the real question is going to be, I'm going to ask you for a win total. Um, wh what are you thinking at this point? It, it definitely, do I'm just going with double digit because I want to say 11, but I'd stick with 10. I think 10 is going to win the division. And I think the Giants are going to win the division. I, re I really do. I know I say it a lot, but they're going to win a division. One of the things that I was able to see you do um, during the uh, year last, or I think it was 2018 or it was 2019, I saw you get involved with uh, some different media groups and you were doing interviews at some different charity events. So you, you, were, you, were, you were jumping into our world a little bit, uh, doing some media stuff. What was it like for you to sort of be on that side? Uh, it's actually pretty cool. I mean, I, I found, you know, newfound respect for you guys because, you know, although I find it easy to be behind a camera, I mean, I could like, I could do this all day. Um, it's not so easy coming up with questions or, uh, you know, when you're in front of someone that doesn't want to talk, uh, having to pull that out of them or, or maybe bringing up something that they don't want to talk about and getting them upset. It's kind of a tough, it's a tough world you guys live in. So I don't plan on doing a lot of it. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I, I still remember one of the, one of the funniest moments I ever dealt with was in an NBA locker room. Uh, I don't know how good your NBA history is, but there's a former number one draft pick by the name of Kwame Brown, who was drafted. Kwame, by Michael. Kwame don't talk to anybody, man. He a bust. <laughs> oh, he and he was playing for the Detroit Pistons, and I went over to him uh, in the locker room. The, the PR rep was sitting right there, and I asked him, "So, after years in this league, what do you think that you've been able to take away from it?" And he says, "Get the f out of my face! I'm not answering any questions." And I just looked at Kevin Grigg, who is the, the PR director of the uh, Detroit Pistons, and I just went, "Yeah, yeah." I, I could just imagine. I could just imagine what you guys do in your world, and. You know, more power to you guys, because I'm sure you get a lot of that. And obviously that doesn't make 
you know, it doesn't make for the interview, but the stories you guys must have of the F offs are, are probably plentiful. Um, for me, because I like handling a lot of the charitable side and more of promoting them in their, if, with their endeavors, I actually get a lot more people who are willing to talk because I'm talking to them about them. The one thing athletes hate more than anything is asking them questions about somebody else. Uh, you know, John, uh, JC, Jonathan Casillas came on the show um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's available in the archives if anybody wants to listen. And we brought up the topic, and I know this was a very sensitive topic for you, but I still will tell you what we talked about. We talked about the 2017 benching of Eli and that whole mess. And I remember yeah. you, and you, were, you, were, you were vocal, and there was, there was a couple of interesting stories he talked about. It. First, like the day that um, McAdoo announced it, he was actually praising McAdoo to a teammate on how McAdoo called JC after he had surgery. And then he made that announcement and he just said, take back everything I said about every nice thing I just said about him. Um, but, yeah. he, but he said, one of the things that um, McAdoo did was he, he honestly felt the franchise changed in that playoff game against Green Bay on the Hail Mary. He says, right from that point on, that team wasn't the same. And, it, and the team just struggled throughout 2017. And I told him, he, he asked me for the media perspective of what happened when uh, Ben made the announcement. And I told him that uh, we knew that Ben was done when he came out and said to us, and I think you remember this too. He said, Geno Smith is going to be, gives us the best opportunity to win on that Sunday against Oakland. And as soon as he said that, yeah, I, I, that I, was I, it. I, he lost, I know he lost. Now, now look, if we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about, you know, stuff like that. I will tell you that there were some people in the locker room that wanted that change as well. I don't want to sit here and say a hundred percent of those teammates wanted to stick with Eli Manning. Now that doesn't mean it was Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. um, it should have been, you know, should have, should have been Webb, Webb or Loletta. Who was there again? It was, it, was, no, it was Webb, right? Yeah, that season it was Eli, Gino, and Webb, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it was, it was, I don't, you know, the 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 sentence you just brought up, the statement that he said about better, better chance to win, that's just a statement that a coach puts out. Do I think he meant it wholeheartedly? No, I, I personally, I do not. But the fan base, you know, and again, I hate, you know, going back into history about this, but I think the fan base would have taken it a little lighter if it was Webb and the Giants came out and said, we just want to see what we have. Mm -hmm. Now, now as a coach, and, and, you know, I coached football for many years and I would have told, I would have told Mac to do this, not that, you know, I'm not a professional coach. He is. But I would have said, Eli, I'm your coach. You're going to start this game because you have an incredible record that you must keep. And then I'm going to pull you in the first quarter or the second quarter. And the game is going to be Davis Webb's. And when Davis Webb uh, craps the bed because he's not ready for it, I'm going to put Geno Smith in because he'll probably give us the best chance to win in the second half. Whatever. You could have been able to do everything. You could have saved Eli. The fans would have been okay. You would have seen what Webb has. And yes, I don't want to sit here and pull hindsight. Oh, of course, you say it 10 years later. No, I said it then. I said it that day. How could you not see what Webb has? How could you not start Eli? And I know what Eli said. Eli said, no, 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 no. I'm okay. Don't worry about it. Let him start the whole game. He earned it. Eli, shut up. Get back in there. Okay. All due respect. You're the king of New York. You're a god here. The greatest player to ever put on a Giants uniform. One of. Um, you know, let's not debate that. One of, <laughs> but I'm the coach. You're not. You're starting the game. Yeah, That's I it. think I think if but you know what the key word is presentation is how you present everything. I think if they would have presented it to everybody, but like we're we're gonna get the Davis Webb. But we we need to get him some practice reps because he has not been, he wasn't practicing even with the second team. He was on he was the uh, was, yeah. yeah. There's a there's a lot of always there's always matter. moving parts. Yeah, always a lot of moving parts to it. Yeah, uh, but 
but the what you know though so so you know we JC and I talked about that for a little bit and just getting that perspective from the players was was very very interesting and like you said there was probably a bunch of players who wanted to see that move happen a lot earlier you know it's just three and thirteen nothing goes right so you always feel like every little thing and 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 McAdoo was desperate at that time too because everybody was on him like twenty four he was he he was I mean he's a hundred percent in a terrible situation. Um, you know, chalk him up there as an incredibly knowledgeable coach, uh, extremely bright. Sorry, he's not a head football coach. He tried to tried to bring a uh, uh, the the slick back Bill Belichick attitude, like uh, "Don't worry, I know more than you do" attitude, and it backfired. Yeah, no, it, de- it definitely did. Uh, Joe, as you see on the screen here, I, I wanted to make sure I plugged your social media. Make sure uh, everybody can see, uh, you know, you're on Twitter, license plate guy, Instagram, license plate guy, Facebook, license plate guy. Um, is there anything else you'd like us to plug right now for you at this point? No, man, I, I, uh, I'm just going to keep, keep plugging away on my social media, running contests, raffles for fans, ticket giveaways, and, you know, anything that comes my way. And again, I go back to the platform. You know, I have a lot of people that reach out to me, a lot of giving giant fans. And, uh, you know, there's just so much stuff that I need. And you know what? If I don't need it, it's going to somebody that does need it or want it. Joe, as they uh, as they say, uh, they call this in Ireland, you're, you're a mensch. You're a great dude. And you can't, we can't, you can't, uh, you can't deny everything that you've done. Uh, I'm proud to call you a friend, and I appreciate you giving us some time today. Uh, you know, I, I really thank you, and uh, and I can only say that I'm I'm I'm, you know, everybody who lives their life the way they want to live, they give, they give, they don't give, they're positive, they're negative. All I ever ask the Giant fans just stay together. Um, there's no reason why we should be arguing with one another. Uh, you're entitled to your opinion, whoever you are. Um, if you don't think Eli's the first battle Hall of Fame, you're wrong. Uh, so <laughs> as, as long as we keep pushing forward as a fan base, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, I, I, and hopefully we're, we're not arguing, uh, you know, at each other too much. And uh, I think it's going to be our year. So I really appreciate you having me on, bro. No problem, buddy. Hang on one second. And, guys, don't forget to follow the show, Big Blue Report. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we'll be going live twice a week. And when training camp uh, starts up, we'll be going live from camp right outside the facility. Joe, thanks again. Thank you, my brother.